<laughs> you can tell if they've eaten or not yet. It's a good way to check and make sure they're they're getting fed, as if they're looking around for something to eat, then I start to get concerned. I know, you're so handsome with your little blaze face, huh? You know, I think that there is a, a misconception that they're just tools. Or, well, you just hunt them and then you leave them be for the rest of the year when the hunting season's over and you... That's not logical, it doesn't make sense. Oh, we're all gonna come over now. But I mean, they're my buddies too. They're, if I've got a bad day, they make me grin and I just like, you know, I grew up around dogs and I probably wouldn't lie and hunt if I couldn't have them. I mean, you know, you hear people, they, they call them in, they spot and stalk, some guys walk down the tracks. I like the dog part of it. That salmon oil's in the closet. Thank you. I won't kill a lion again. I personally will not kill one. The only way I would ever want to kill one is if it was hurting a person or something, which is very rare. You don't know anything about a lion until you follow one for a week, and that's a, that's a true statement. Most people don't have a clue, only what they see on TV or read. I think for most houndsmen, it's, it's the dogs that, that keep them going, and you know, I think that's the, the true love of the sport is the dogs, but we do, we really like the lions and enjoy watching what they do. And, I wish people knew that it's not portrayed how you see it in the anti-hound hunting films. That it's not a extremely stressful event on the animal that's being pursued. Those dogs are in their absolute happiest place they could possibly be. You can't force them to do that. So my name is Becky Dwyer and I live in northeastern Nevada where wine hunters. <laughs>